Hello. This is the video for the MGHS PHEV walk around, and this is the top of the range plug in hybrid with 1.5 litre turbo petrol engine plus the EV electric motor at the back. Um, so, as you can see, the vehicle comes with full LED lights plus LED daytime running lights, and also you get sequential turning lights at the front and also at the rear as well. I'll switch off the vehicle I can show you the key so key wise um, obviously new cars come with two sets of keys and uh, if you press the button the vehicle will lock uh, with the wind mirror folds in and if you press the button the wind mirror uh, the vehicle will unlocked the wind mirror opens up and uh, to open the tailgate three ways one is obviously use the key press and hold and the tailgate opens all the way up you can adjust the tailgate opening as well um, but I can show you that later and to close the tailgate, simply one touch on this button or press and hold the key on the key blade. And there you go, after three beeps, and the, the, the tailgate will eventually drop. So that's how to access to the door. Um, you do also have keyless entry, so basically what you do is you can keep it in your pocket as long as within the range. Simply press the button, the vehicle will lock. And press the button, the vehicle will unlock. <coughs> So let's jump up on the driver's side. This is your charging port. Uh, so to charge the vehicle, it's got the Type 2 charger plug, basically. They come with the vehicle, it's underneath the boot um, uh, at the back. I'll show you that. So I'll put the tailgate again. And on the left hand side, that's your petrol tank. Um, premium petrol only, 95 or 98 recommended. So this is how the boot looks like. Open the boot. And this is how the battery pack everything. Uh, this is a demo vehicle, so we didn't put a um, charger over here. But for your vehicle, you have a charger box in there uh, that allows you to charge at three ping um, at home, basically. Uh, connect to the right on the right hand side, by the way. Um, puzzle shelf extends all the way, pushing all the way. If you would do like to take this off, simply use this to pull it in. You can take off the puzzle shelf and close the tailgate one touch again goes all the way so that's at the back um, rear seats um, very simple nothing too special pockets um, two charging ports um, aircon and um, the rear seats as well you are able to adjust the rear seats um, change the angle um, so by pulling against this lever so for example I can push it to this level so they raised up or push down to change the change the uh, rear seats sort of angle basically in, in the center, you get center armrest and click that, opens up the cup holders, click that, small storage over there, otherwise close it off. And the other side, the same thing, you get a small um, small handle on the top that allows you to uh, drop down the seats as well or change the angle whenever you like. To drop down the seats, pull this, drop all the way, it will be completely flat, nice and easy, and you can just pull the lever again, just push all the way up. Yes. Make sure you drag all the seat belts out um, so it doesn't get in the way. So yeah, that's how the back looks like. Let's go to the front. So this is how the interior looks like. So on the PHEV, all the vehicle come with um, standard electric seats on the driver and the passenger door. So forward, backwards, up and down, rear adjust for the back. And you also get a small uh, lever here over here to adjust your lumbar support. This one pushes in, pushes out. So that's how the um, driver's side looks like. Uh, window control on the right, uh, wind mirror control on the on the left and on, on the right hand side as well. Door controls on the right. The vehicle automatically locks its doors um, once you drive off to a certain speed, basically. So now we're gonna jump in. <coughs> so to adjust the right wing mirror for example simply click right then up left up left um, right up left and down and click left left up right and down to adjust the wing mirror that's pretty simple and you can you can fold in the wing mirror and you can also lock the windows for rear passengers for example you have a younger passenger at the back so that's all the controls on the side um, jump in the center so to start the vehicle up this is the push button you will need to hold the brake all the way to be able to start the vehicle to switch off just one touch switch it off so it's completely off so again push push the um, push the brake 
press the button, the vehicle opens up and mute the aircon, mute the, mute the music. So this is how the dashboard looks like. Uh, it's got a full digital display. Uh, so on the, on the left, it's got the digital speedo. On the right, that's your percentage of power. And you get your range to empty for the petrol tank. You get your range to empty for the um, electric motor, basically. In the center, that's your display for whatever you, you choose from. Um, uh, cruise control, um, how do you say, tire pressure monitoring system. system. You, can, you can adjust all those things. And at the bottom, that's your combined total. So, for example, combined total with petrol and EV, that's about 400 Ks left. Um, outside degrees um, and parking and time and your autometer at the moment. So, that's how the dashboard looks like. Um, to basically change anything, you can use these buttons on the right hand side of the steering. So, if I click right, that allows to me to bring to another menu basically. So this is the setting menu, I can set brightness, I can set uh, overspeed threshold. For example, if I click OK here, that allows you to change me, change the, um, how do you say, vehicle speed limiter. Uh, so that uh, it give you a warning at 120 or 115, whichever you like. Uh, if, I'm, if I want, want to set at 115, I'm just going to click OK. That means if I reach 115, uh, the vehicle give you a, a small beeping sound, small warning to tell me uh, that uh, I'm over the my speed limit sort of thing. Uh, next to service, click OK, allows you to see what's your next service is due. Uh, this date is not accurate, so we, we don't worry about that um, at the moment. Brightness, click OK, you can go up and down. There are three levels of brightness whenever you change. I'm driving at night or daytime, you may want to change that. And if we click right again, the next screen it will be the warning screen. At the moment, nothing showed up means uh, everything's all in order but if I do open the door you can see the door um, the driver door is open that means the warning is on sort of thing uh, click right that brings up the vehicle information basically on the screen it shows you all your trip odometer all those things information we can go up and down on the screen so we go up allows us to see the 12 volt battery healthy if it's healthy or not this is not the EV battery by the way, this is the 12 volt battery, so the normal petrol car will have this battery as well. It's over 13 volts, uh, so it's over 13 voltage, uh, so that means it's, uh, it's, it's healthy at the moment. Go up again, that's through your tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, so because the, the vehicle uh, has a tire pressure monitoring system set inside the alloys, um, it will detect your tire pressure um, basically when you drive the vehicle. Uh, in case it goes too high or too low, uh, it will give you a warning sort of thing if your tire is punctured or anything like that. Uh, go up again, that's your accumulated total, tell you, tell you what's your average c c uh, consumption, all that things. You'll notice here it says MPG, that's miles per gallon. Unfortunately, it didn't convert to most New Zealand standard unit, where it, most likely it's kilometers per liter or liter uh, per 100 Ks. Uh, so you need to convert that into your uh, just put on Google it will show up your uh, your, um, your 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 consumption other things uh, later on and that's the current journey it means how long you ha I have been running for but the vehicle hasn't run so everything's zero um, and that's your battery so the energy flow that flow the energy flow from the battery from uh, from the engine from the drivetrain all that things again while you're driving it will show up the, up here click go up again it goes back to the hybrid information tell you all the things the motor speed engine speed all the things and then we go back to the 12 battery so last menu we click right now allows us to see your sort of uh, assistance systems you can see it's adaptive cruise control uh, land departure warning all those things Every, once everything's set it's going to display here so again if you could want to go to any uh, different screens go left and right that allows you to go, um, see everything sort of thing um, next two buttons on the, at the bottom this is one is the sort of phone connection button so when your smartphone is connected for example iPhone or Android um, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto you can press this button to jump to your phone screen um, you do you can um, how do you say reset these things if you like and then next one is your voice control uh, so whenever your smartphone is connected with the cable for example again Android Auto and Apple CarPlay you can use this button to activate your Siri command or your Google Assistant while you're driving. Um, nothing is connected, so if I press this button at the moment, it doesn't do anything. 
on the left that's your volume control up and down change the volume mute control to mute the music obviously left and right to change the track control next last and next for example um, <coughs> this button here that is the phone connection button so when your phone is connected um, this allows you to pick up a, sm uh, a phone call when someone calls in uh, source allows you to change to different um, uh, music player so for example you are listening to the FM you want to change to AM or you want to change to Bluetooth audio you can press the source button so that's how the steering buttons looks like we're gonna go to the back of the and uh, the steering so behind the steering you find all the controls the on this side that's your um, that's your windscreen wiper control so if I push this down at this level where you can see it should be on for example zero that means the windscreen wiper is off it doesn't do anything when it's off position push it down once the windscreen wiper only wipe once and it stops and then I go to second position go up to this position that means the windscreen wiper is on uh, it's on automatic now so that means that when your rainwater builds up at the front windscreen the, the windscreen wiper will wipe it for you um, at the, this automatic windscreen wiper, wiper screen um, you will be able to change this up and down so all the way up up here that means it's on so the least sensitivity and all the way up this is the max sensitivity so that allows you to change your your sensitivity for the auto wipers sometimes auto wipers may wipe a little bit slower than what you want it to be um, so that allows you to change that then go up one more that will be on so the low speed go up all the way that will be on high speed so normally you want to leave on auto or leave it off whenever you like so that's the windscreen wiper uh, you can also access to the rear windscreen so simply use the switch at the front switch forward and that's the just the what just the rear wiper on switch on sorry switch off that's off doesn't do anything and switch all the way bottom and hold that allows you to watch the rear wiper same like same as going forward switch all the way forward and hold was to wash the rear wiper apart from that leave it off and to wash the front uh, pull it against the steering and hold that will allows you to wash the front windscreen basically so that's the windscreen wiper uh, on the left that's your indicator and um, and auto lights basically so normally you can just leave on auto all the time you don't need to do anything the vehicle will switch on switch off the light uh, for you uh, but if you want to manually switch on you can switch on like this or manually switch on the nighttime as well so you will notice on the top dash that means the headlight is on uh, otherwise I switch to auto the auto lights will switch on where the headlights switch off because we're daytime uh, so yeah that's how the auto lights looks like uh, fog lights if I switch on the, on the lights um, for example nighttime running lights um, you will have a fog light you can see on the dash over here uh, that's the front fog light switch and leave another one so that's front that's rear fog lights then switch backwards no fog lights again switch forward front fog lights switch and leave front and rear fog lights and switch back to point to zero that means it's off uh, and to switch back it's automatic again indicator just as a normal car go up go down and uh, the small feature on this particular vehicle is when you at the low speed uh, within sort of 15 k's or 20 k's when you have your indicator light on your 360 degree camera comes up um, you can disengage this but we can show you that later uh, and then drop it down just to no indicator basically flashlight pulling it against the steering just like the normal flash uh, you can manually push on the, uh, the uh, high beam as well but the vehicle come with a high beam uh, auto high beam feature which we can cover that later when we go through that um, center screen so yeah that's the controls behind the steering after that you will notice on the left and high left bottom just below the indicator gear you have another thing it is the cruise control button um, we will cover that later um, so at the moment that's all the controls for the st screen itself uh, for the steering itself so after the steering um, we're going to talk about the um, center console the driving part basically um, so gear selector uh, it's all electronic um, operated basically uh, so you can see now the parking brake is engaged is on and the gear is on park uh, where you can find on the driving um, driving digital dash um, says it's on park as well to push into drive simply hold the brake press this button um, on the side 
push on drive then light touch forward push on neutral all the way to reverse you can skip the neutral as well just push pull all the way it will be on drive and to push back into park press the button it will be in park this handbrake automatic engage and disengage when you go into gears to park to drive to reverse for example i'm going to drive it disengage press it to park it's going to engage on uh, you can manually release you can manually pull it on as well uh, but you don't have to auto hold the function uh, so the vehicle has a function basically if i'm going to have it my seatbelt on for example uh, I'm gonna press this button and the auto hold will engage or I can press this button auto hold will disengage how that works is auto hold is engage I'm on safe, safe driving condition I'm just gonna slightly go forward you can see my I'm not holding the brake at all I'm not holding the brake the vehicle is still on drive um, they it shows a green light for the parking um, parking brake that means the vehicle is ready to go whenever I'm ready to go all I need to do is just press the um, throttle the vehicle will drive forward releasing the handbrake automatically for example right now just slowly go forward and if I'm gonna brake stop all the way you can see the parking brake engage again the vehicle will stay stationary until you are ready ready to go pressing the uh, accelerator basically and for example you're gonna push out to park you can see now more now the red light will come on this is now the parking brake not the auto hold brake anymore and if you don't want it simply press this button the vehicle will, will stop uh, stop your um, engaging the auto hold function for you next one is the hill descendability you only use this function when you go in deep downhill basically um, simply press this button the vehicle holds your speed at low speed uh, without you applying the brake or accelerator and the vehicle will slowly uh, driving you downhill sort of thing you don't need to use this in when you're driving around city sort of thing unless you are going really deep downhill and next one is the main part is the EV button so at the moment you can see on the dashboard we are on auto basically so auto means it's on just normal hybrid mode so when you drive the vehicle when you start the vehicle it may start the EV part uh, EV engine uh, EV motor and then when you start driving the, the petrol motor will kick in sort of thing um, and um, when you brake or charge the electric motor uh, where well, the petrol sort of slows down sort of thing so it's on, that's what it, it's called auto mode it will, it will use in between to get best efficiency efficiency and best performance as well and if I do press this button whenever you like simply tap this button you can see the EV mode gonna kick in and then at the right bottom it's gonna show EV mode that means as long as you have enough charging it at the moment I've got 47 um, percent the vehicle will be able to drive on pure electric uh, no matter what speed you are driving on you can drive the EV mode on even 100 k's and then it would only use the electric motor uh, so it won't use any uh, petrol at all uh, in different situations it may not allow you to engage on EV mode let's say if I'm gonna jump into the aircon uh, at the moment you can see the aircon is just doing normal stuff but if I'm if I'm gonna choose the aircon to um, how do you say blast the windscreen for example uh, or I'm gonna press the heated seats on um, then the EV um, how do you say let me just press that or demister for the rear you can see now it's I'm gonna say exit from EV mode uh, so that mean that means because I'm using quite a lot of heat from the from the vehicle itself and the vehicle won't allow me to go uh, how do you say uh, EV mode so I'm gonna say it's on auto mode at the moment I'm gonna try to press EV button it says EV mode entry not support so that means uh, because again I'm blasting the windscreen or I'm using quite a lot of heat from the vehicle itself uh, it does not allow me to go into EV mode but in other situation you just simply tap the EV button it goes in EV mode or just press the EV button again it goes back to auto mode yep easy um, after that uh, has a light just press the button or the flashlight comes on press the button disengage 360 camera allows you to see everything on the, um, on the camera so when you put it on reverse for example gonna leave on reverse uh, it automatically comes up obviously the 360 camera plus the reverse camera you push in park it disappears uh, or in some situation you're going forward you're going left and right allows you can press this button it'll bring up uh, the 360 camera once the 360 camera is on uh, you can allow us to press 2d so you can see different camera angles 
click this for example I'm gonna click the right angle left to front you can see the graphic changes you can see what's around you uh, this is just a generic white color uh, your vehicle may be black red or blue whichever uh, it's gonna only show white basically you can see the tire view as well just click the tire you can see left to right um, curb wheels you can see the front view Let's go back rear view and you can also see the setting menu so in the setting menu uh, you will see different selections um, you can see the line view, so that means when you reverse all the uh, um, reverse, um, it does give you the uh, how do you say directions for that particular line view. Um, you also have auto view on low speed. That means when you use the indicator, um, the vehicle will engage the 360 um, view for you as well. If you do want to disengage that, simply take it off. Uh, 3D animation on startup, and that means the vehicle give you a 3D animation sort of thing. Um, and high speed 3D, that's all just the normal touch reminder again on and off, depends on how you like it. You can change any settings at any point, and if you don't want to disengage that, click that, it'll be off. And yeah, so that's the 360 camera. And now we can also use this button to, for the uh, boot release. So let's say if you want to open the boot, simply press and hold the button, the boot all the, all the, goes all the way. While it's going all the way, press and hold uh, the button and the vehicle will drop down eventually uh, with after three beeps. So that's the boot release. So that's all the buttons around the steering. If you open the cover, you'll find a 12 volt socket charging port. And this, this USB charging port on the right just allows charging. And on the one on the left allows you to charge and also access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto at the same time. And so yeah, that's the charging port. Uh, so click it down. And then direct buttons on the left and right um, at the bottom. So volume, uh, down, plus, and then home button whenever you are in, for example, I'm in the radio screen. Just gonna turn it down a little bit. And then you can press this button to go back to home screen. As simple this is the car setting screen so you can click this button goes to the car setting screen and this is the aircon screen press this button and anytime it goes to aircon screen uh, rear demister individual screen just for the rear uh, rear windscreen demister front windscreen blast so you know in the winter morning you can blast the front windscreen and um, this is how the aircon looks like basically we can go through the aircon first uh, aircon uh, allows you to do two temperatures um, dual, dual zone climate control so if I swap left and right you can see two different temperatures but if I click the sync button this temperature will disappear it only allows you to adjust the this uh, driver time it will follow the driver temperature basically uh, directions um, up, up um, top and bottom just bottom bottom front windscreen so normal fan speed up and down click in between and then you can take this off as well simply press this button um, aircon off press this button aircon on auto uh, AC recirculation, so just uh, air from outside, just in auto, and air inside, otherwise from outside. And um, heat seats, simply press the button, heat seats will be on, press the button, heat seats will be off. No matter what it is, if it's white, means it's not selected, if it's uh, green then, or blue, whichever you call it, it, will, it means it's selected. So, yeah, that's all there you come switch back let's go to the home screen so first one we're going to notice is the um, on the left is the um, how do you say music player so simply press this button and you can see it's on music uh, so you can change to different radio stations whenever you like so you go left or right allows you to change to different next radio station and these are your favorite stations or presets if you let's say you want to save that 93.4 to the first station click and hold until you hear the beep now the and the uh, heart will just sort of emblem and that tells you that you saved the station at, um, at the first one basically and you can save all the all the six ones you can save more go to your save the station list you can adjust them as well and you can refresh by pressing this button you can see your um, how do you say station list by refresh list when you go to different areas different region you have different station list so that's the radio stations AM just the same and when your Bluetooth is connected you can you have the music icon that allows you to access to your Bluetooth music basically 
uh, audio is your audio settings which we will go that later so what I'm going to do is just jump back to home screen next one will be the navigation so navigation settings let's click navigation uh, it's going to load the screen now <coughs> So we'll click accept every time you start the navigation. So this is how the navigation looks like. This is where we are sort of thing. Uh, if you do want to change anything, this is the aircon button you go to. So for example, if you want to change any settings, click settings, it'll go to different settings. Uh, if you do want to navigate anywhere, just click a new route and click address, then start typing the address. For example, I'm gonna use this as a Pokikoi. So P U K you can see the result already comes up but if it doesn't come up just keep typing until you finish the whole word um, then Pukui straight name I'm gonna type King Street K-I-N-G now you can see King Street comes up click King Street the number I'm gonna try to do a 50 for example 50 King Street comes up just click that you can see now where the 50 King Street is select as destination and we're just gonna click the route. This is the route uh, the guidance tell you to do. Let's do start navigation. Now you can see the green bars, just gonna get us to the navigation sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's about one minute, one minute drive, um, about 500 meters away. So that's about navigation. If you want to cancel that, simply click that and delete route. And click OK, now it's delete. And if you do want to save any route or anything like that, you can always see your saved locations, places, history, everything over here. And that allows you to have access to it. Yep, navigation is pretty easy. Uh, let's go back to home screen again. On the right, we've already covered the, the aircon, so we will, we will leave that alone. Uh, next one will be the phone settings. So, phone settings, if we open up, you can see this particular vehicle has two phones in, in its memory. You can connect each of them or you can delete um, any of them whenever you like. And the, and the MGBT name uh, is your name you can search on your phone to connect to this device. Uh, for your initial setup, we're going to switch it off. And obviously, this is a screen you're going to have to you can see and switch it back on. Then next minute, you can see the name over there uh, that allows you to access to your let's say your, if you open up your phone, go to your settings, go to your Bluetooth, just simply search this name. When it comes up, click the button, connect it. Um, you'll you will be able to connect the Bluetooth with, with it. Um, and then you have call history, you have contacts, you have keypad once your vehicle is, and once your phone is connected. Um, so yeah, that's about the whole uh, Bluetooth connection. Uh, and we're gonna go back and car settings. Um, that will have a lot of things to talk about for the vehicle safety and everything. So click car, and then you can see, first one is the driving assistance uh, systems. Uh, so when um, how do you say this allows you to see all the MG pilot systems so first one is speed assist systems so at the moment the speed information warning that is on uh, that means the vehicle uh, will pick up speed signs telling you what's the speed limit around the particular area uh, it is on the moment if we jump to the dash you can see this round circle it is on it doesn't display any numbers yet because we're not driving but once you start driving it's going to display 130 whenever you go to a certain area that has speed signs sort of thing um, next one is speed assist systems so it is off at the moment so it doesn't do anything apart from give you the reading of the speed limit in the area but if we do change to menu for example sorry we need to need to push off the cruise control by the way before you can use this function so press menu and that allows the driver to basically set a target speed uh, for example let's say your your target speed is about 60k and that doesn't allow you to go over 60k sort of thing uh, when it reads the speed sign but i only give you a warning it doesn't really give you control unless you press set Next one is intelligent, and the vehicle will basically see the speed um, limit, let's say 60, uh, give you a warning before you go over 60k, and then the, the vehicle will limit your throttle response, even if you push the throttle all the way, it doesn't, uh, uh, even if you push the throttle down, it doesn't allow you to go over the speed limit. The only way you can go over that temporarily is to push it all the way. Um, so for most people, they may not like it, so what I would do, my preference is leave this off, but leave the first one on. Next one is the lane assist. So at the moment it is off, um, but you can switch it on simply just by clicking the on button. 
uh, once this is on you can see on the top dash on the bottom here uh, you can see a, a um, yellow light over there that means the land departure warning is on at the moment so it is on alert the system mode is on alert that means when the vehicle drives over 60 k power um, the front sensor will pick up the land marking and in case you you go left and right um, over the land markings the vehicle will give you an alert give you a ping sound telling you you're over the certain speed you are you're, you're, you're over uh, your land marking basically just in case you go over the ditch or something like that next one is a departure assist so if I push the departure assist um, you can see this yellow light now comes on that means when you go over 6k the vehicle still see the line marking and can still give you a warning um, in case you go you are likely or you are going over the, uh, over your line marking and also before you go over your line marking the vehicle will keep in the right sense we will try to sort of steer you away from the line marking give you a very slight turn telling you that to, to keep you in the right center a bounce between the line markings and then last one is the lane keeping. Lane keeping shares the same same light as the departure assist. How that works is when you go over the 60 k power, the vehicle will basically permanently steer for you as long as the lane marking is accurate and to keep you in the right center. Um, now you can see when we have this orange light on, uh, yellow light on, we have bars on the right bottom, on the left bottom. It, that means the vehicle will see the lane marking. Uh, when you are over 60 k's, you will see a bright light on the left and right uh, along the vehicle um, and it will basically uh, access or help you to keep in the right center. Uh, obviously, for the audible alert, for that beeping, you can have it on or have it off whenever you like. For the alert sensitivity, you can have low, normal or high, up to you. So you can leave on normal just to start with. Um, and um, yeah that's basically the lane assist systems so once you push this on you will you notice on the indicator you have a small button here that allows you to engage and disengage just temporarily basically if i press the button again now you can see the light comes up comes off if i press the button again you can see the light comes on so these allow you to temporarily engage and disengage this particular feature but if i push this off uh, no matter how many times I press this button, you, I won't be able to have the fun feature back. So this allows you to have that have have the function on. Um, this allows you to temporarily press this button to have it on, have it off whenever you like. Uh, we'll just leave it off for now. Last next one is the MG Pilot. So that's your adaptive cruise control behind the steering. So at the moment, there's no orange light. There's no cruise control light on the dash as of yet. But if I'm going to pull it all the way, pull it back towards to the steering, that means the cruise control is on. So you can see the orange light over there. That means the cruise control is ready to engage. Um, when the cruise control is ready to engage, when we start driving, you can simply tap the set button on the side that allows you to have the vehicle on cruise control. Then after that, the orange light, will, the yellow light will be basically go green. That means the vehicle is on cruise control. Um, but because this is more advanced, this has adaptive cruise control. So how that works is when you're on cruise control, um, this is your vehicle and your vehicle will see the line markings at the front of you, you know, that will see the sort of vehicle in front of you. Um, then you can see the three bars at the front that allows you to see, um, choose the distance between your vehicle and the front vehicle. So let's say we are the three bars. I'm gonna change to a, a sort of a shorter distance just by pulling against steering. I'll pull again, I'll push forward. You can see the change. That goes one one bar, two bar, or three bars. So the bars is basically your distance between you and the front vehicle. One bar is more like a two second difference. Three bars is more like three seconds. Four bars is more like four seconds. So it's totally up to your speed sort of thing. Um, to change your, um, you can see on the top top as well, cruise set at a particular case. Let's say um, you you have your cruise control set at, um, when you're driving at 50, you press set, the cruise control will set at uh, 50. You can then use this switch to go up or down to change your set speed. The set speed goes round to fives. So let's say you have 51, that goes to 55, goes to 60, goes to 65. Uh, we're 
and it goes down by 5 will be 50, 45, 40 um, and so on. Um, that allows you to change your cruise control speed and the cruise control speed is your vehicle driving speed when the road is cleared. Um, but when the road is not clear, there's a, there's a vehicle in front of you driving slower than your set speed, your vehicle will follow the front vehicle um, and keep the safe distance. Does it make sense? Um, and another thing about this cruise control is when you want to cancel the cruise control, for example, if the, the light shows green, that means you're on cruise control. If you do want to pause or cancel the cruise control temporarily, you simply apply the brake, just push it down. Uh, it will pause the cruise control, you're back to normal. Or simply the flick, just push the switch, just a light touch forward, it will be on cancel the cruise control. To resume, simply pull it back to resume or to completely cancel the cruise control, simply push it all the way off. Means there's no light, no cruise control, but if I pull it against, you can see the light, and push it forward, no light, no cruise control. So that's everything about the cruise control. And next one, <coughs> So forward collision warning, uh, so it is on at the moment, obviously it's recommended on by a lot of manufacturers and that means the vehicle, when uh, when you're driving on the road, uh, when there's a, how they say, emergency braking or anything like that happening at the, in front of the vehicle and the car thinks you're likely to crash into something, the vehicle will give you alert first and, and then at the last second the vehicle will give you emergency braking um, before you crash into something or someone basically. You can switch it off, switch it on, you can change to just alert or alert with the emergency braking as well. Obviously it's recommended to keep on emergency braking. Alert sensitivity, low, normal, high. So normal will be fine for most people, but you can change it. Um, pedestrian auto emergency braking. Uh, so it helps when someone crossing the street. Um, so it does give you the emergency braking as well. Again, you can change it to off or, or no, uh, on uh, whenever you like. Next one, rear driving assist. So you get your rear driving assist on at the moment, so that's the whole systems. Uh, blind spot detection, that's on your wing mirror, so on the on up here, and also on the up here, on the left and right, uh, your blind spot detection is on. Uh, that means when you're traveling on the road, the vehicle coming behind you on the left and right, uh, I give you I give you an indication, uh, tell, allows you to see basically um, some, some, someone is driving behind you just in case you do turn left and right on, um, at an emergency situation uh, so it is on lane change assist basically if you indicate it uh, if you indicate um, and it does give you sort of um, how do you say flashlight telling you that your, your vehicle uh, someone is at your blind spot rear traffic cross alert when you reverse the car park uh, if the vehicle traveling behind you again uh, give you alert on the reverse camera as well so it is on at the moment you don't need to do anything unless you want to turn it off next one comfort convenience so in comfort convenience we'll find the first one is lighting uh, so at the moment the ambient lighting is on ambient lighting goes around the center um, console train basically uh, you can go to the ambient light settings uh, when you go in there you can change on and off you can change the mode to be on or auto you can change the lighting control to be off for individual uh, on individual you are able to select all the different colors select your brightness all the things so that's the ambient lighting a very cool looking at night uh, follow me home so it is on at the moment that means when you switch on switch off the vehicle at night the headlight stays on for about 15 to 20 seconds so you can see your driveway again if you don't like it switch it off you like it leave it on find my car is uh, third one find my car is when you can't find your vehicle um, in your car park let's say uh, as long as the vehicle is locked you can use your uh, your key um, use your normal key basically just click the lock button uh, from a distance and the vehicle will give you lights or light and horn uh, so you can see your vehicle basically if you don't like the horn just leave on lights uh, auto high beam it is on the moment how that works is when you're driving you're completely dark as long as your vehicle light is on auto basically and your your headlights on obviously will switch on automatically but if it's completely dark, there's no traffic on the road, there's no traffic light, and the vehicle will automatically switch on your high beam. And that allows you the vehicle to see much more on the open road, obviously. And in case you have you are for, you are starting following your vehicle with, with their brake light on or, or back light on, or you have a incoming traffic with their headlights on, 
where you are coming through a com uh, how they say a traffic light or congestion with a sort of a traffic light the auto high beam automatically switch it off so you can leave it on all the time if you like this feature if you don't like it you can leave it off next one locking um, so at the moment it's like all doors that means if I'm gonna use the key to unlock the vehicle all doors were unlocked and uh, passive unlock is basically why uh, switch on switch off the vehicle the other uh, other doors will be unlocked sort of thing if you don't want it you can just unlock the driver door unlock the passive unlock the driver door only uh, Havac that's for the aircon basically so you can leave on obviously you have the auto um, auto aircon auto air conditioning um, you can leave on just the blower level to lower medium or high when you're on auto uh, auto heated room rear window so this works when you start the vehicle in the sort of winter morning or anything like that and the vehicle automatically heated up the rear window for the first sort of 10 to 20 minutes while you're driving um, if you don't like it you can leave it off but it is a convenience feature next one is the other so in other you find the tailgate opening position so you can choose how how wide you want the tailgate opens basically if you're gonna do this and the tailgate is gonna only opens to about a very very low percentage otherwise it goes to 100% so you can see different percentage very low or very high the lowest you can go is about 40% highest go is obviously 100% so if, if you have a small garage you will you will be able to change this just to adjust that um, mirror auto fold and unfold it is on that means when we close the door when we uh, shut the when you lock the vehicle and the wind will automate for this off if you don't like it you can select it off steering wheel button uh, so this is the function where you can change to manipulate this particular button on the steering we cover that for the uh, smartphone but if you don't want it to go to smartphone you can go to home that means for example I'm gonna press it now you can see the screen goes back to home so that's about that particular um, sort of um, function to manipulate how it goes through again if you if you need it you can change it to whole home or car or smartphone whichever you like next one driving and maintenance so stability control is on at the moment you don't want to turn it off unless you have to how do you say unless you you, you want to go slightly off-road or something like that you can turn it off but mostly you have you have it on for extra safety sort of thing uh, battery level control so at the moment on default settings so it allows you to sort of uh, give a little bit um, how do you say uh, give you a little bit um, battery leveling sort of based on your driving behavior you can do medium or you can do high battery level so it give you um, a control the battery how do you say give you depends on how you much performance you want the battery to contribute to the vehicle driving or anything like that default is totally okay to, to, to normal people but if you want a little bit more battery level that means you want to push a little bit more battery uh, to save a little bit more energy for how do you say uh, safety driving or anything like that you can change to high battery level so that's about the battery level control uh, factory settings you can reset the whole screen uh, if you need to otherwise you don't have to do that just go to home screen uh, next one we're gonna cover the setup <laughs> so in the setup first one is audio uh, you can see you can change the system beeps k beeps adaptive volume loudness all that things uh, next one is EQ settings you can change the EQ setting up and down to change whichever you like you do get a costume as well you can go up and down up here just to change whichever you like for those uh, EQs um, sound stage you can change different sound stage go up and down left and right to change all your things you can do uh, just uh, driver's 3d sound or everyone gets 3d sound or no 3d sound otherwise just uh, everyone gets 3d sound click this click this it allows you to go to different um, sound contributions sort of thing uh, virtual subwoofer you can switch it off or switch it on whenever you like radio you don't need to adjust this this is pure this is okay for New Zealand uh, radio stations um, next one time you can change different times whenever you like basically um, so you can adjust this because you, you turn the GPS sync off and that allows you to manually adjust these times if you do press it on it will automatically change the, the time uh, with itself basically so we're gonna leave it off because it's easy to adjust the, the, the time by yourself and then next one is format 12 to 24 hours that's all normal 
Bluetooth again allows you to see what who is connected. For example, if I want to delete this device, I'm just going to click delete. It's already deleted that device. Uh, display allows you to see your um, display um, brightness basically at the moment it's on auto that means it's going to switch between day and night uh, when you hit the light switch on off in case at some point you find your night is too bright or too low you can adjust this by going up and down then switch back to auto again that allows you to see basically um, um, allows you to change basically when it's auto, when it's go to night, it will be 100% going to 1 instead of 3 or something like that. Um, and you can do uni settings, you can change all the things, you don't need to, obviously. Uh, uni setting, you can actually change to um, liters per 100Ks, that's just easier for fuel consumption. Um, then systems, uh, so you can reset your systems if you like again. So that's about the settings. Again, 360 camera, just as the same with this button here. Uh, no difference then we can click right all these ones allows you to access to other things when your smartphone or USB cable is connected at the moment nothing is connected nothing light up you can also turn off the screen as well when you're driving in the dark or simply tap the button uh, it goes back to the main screen uh, when your Apple CarPlay is connected this, this bar will light up at the moment it's on grey uh, when your Android Auto um, is connected this bar will light up at the moment it's on grey color so that's about the whole screen basically and uh, in the cloud box you should find your owner's menu and uh, service book in case you need to read through something uh, on the top so the first thing you have your sunglasses holder you can just have the sunglasses on and off uh, and you have your all the lighting control on the left and right for example the door control uh, if this is price thing if I'm gonna open the door uh, the light will light up basically but if this is push back and open mm -hmm. the door no lights um, so this is a door light we can leave it on for now and reading lights right hand side reading lights back and all the reading lights will be on by pressing that button and then after that that's the sunroof so first one is the shade so if you can just one touch the shade goes all the way basically if you do want to stop anywhere just light touch so the shade goes so that it goes halfway then press the button again it goes all the way and then uh, sunroof, so you can push up, sunroof, sunroof opens in a tilt way, and drop down, sunroof drop it down basically. You can also open the sunroof just by pressing it all the way, and that allows you, you can stop anywhere, by press this, then it goes all the way, it goes open all the way. Yep, so that should cover all the features, everything for the MGHS PHEV. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you.